I have yet another test for you lovely people. Um, so we took the, uh, the Myers-Briggs uh, personality test with the 16 different types of personality. Every time I mention that, I'd like to point out that it's not scientific and there are, you know, real, legit criticisms of it that make sense. I still think it's fun to take just for the hell of it and to see how they categorize you, but uh, it's not exactly the most accurate, you know, psychological test out there. Um, so we did that test. We did the eight values test, which to this point was the most accurate political test I've ever taken. I think it's more detailed than the political compass test, the traditional political compass test, um, which always puts me as a libertarian leftist. Um, this test, the eight values test, put me as a, a libertarian socialist, which is interesting. So now I'm going to take the left values test. So this one is supposed to be even more specific. Um, what is left values? Left values is a leftist quiz inspired and inspired by and based upon the eight values quiz that seeks to identify your position on the left wing spectrum. If you are not a leftist, this quiz is obviously not suited for you. You will be presented with a statement, and then you will answer your, with your opinion on the statement from strongly agree to strongly disagree, with each answer slightly affecting your scores. The questions for each axis are presented in order rather than scattered. At the end of the quiz, your answers will be compared to the maximum possible uh, for each value, thus giving you a percentage answer honestly. There are 72 questions in this test. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. You can see the breakdown here. Revolution, scientific, central, international, party, production, conservative, reform, utopian, decentral, national, union, nature, progressive. This is going to be a lot of fun for nerds like myself, political junkies like myself. Okay, you'll be presented with a series of statements for each one. Click the button with your opinion on it. Got it. Here we go. Reforming capitalist society to achieve... Question 1 of 72. Reforming capitalist society to achieve better rights for workers is desirable. Yeah, of course. Strongly agree with that. Revolution is the best way of achieving a socialist society. I think we would lose a revolution because we don't have the power, we don't have the money, we don't have the guns. So we would lose, and I think we would lose rather quickly and decisively, so I disagree. Um... The negative consequences of a revolution generally outweigh the advantages. I mean, yeah, I kind of agree. I think we would lose. <laughs> Liberal democracy is a viable way of achieving a socialist society. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I think the best way to achieve our goals is to sort of like do a hostile takeover of the current system and the institutions and the structures. You know? Um, so you can't do the burn it all down approach because in the burn it all down approach, again, we don't have the money, we don't have the weapons. Um, and I think as a matter of principle, you should only use defensive violence. I, I'm a deep believer in, you know, political nonviolence to use that as much as possible. I only believe in violence for self-defense. Um, so liberal democracy is a viable way of achieving a socialist society. Yeah, I mean, it's the least bad of all bad options. A socialist revolution is made inevitable by the conditions of capitalism. Mm. Inevitable is a strong word, because I think we have a lot of distractions that sort of prevent anything like that from ever happening, so it's definitely not inevitable. Uh, I'm just going to go neutral on this one. Workplace democracy within capitalism is an acceptable alternative to a complete socialization of the economy. Yeah, I sort of agree with that. Uh, revolutionary violence is acceptable as long as the final outcome is positive. No, the ends do not justify the means. You should be against violence in a principled way. Um, redistributing wealth away from the wealthy through taxes is a viable way of defeating inequality. Yeah, that's true. Modern social democracy is a betrayal of left-wing values. Not at all. I think it's so far the best embodiment of left-wing values in the world. And those systems function really well. Um, oppressed peoples have the right to engage in a violent uprising when all other options have been exhausted. Let me just lower this a little bit. It's big. Um, oppressed peoples have a right to engage in a violent uprising when all other options have been exhausted. Mm. Like I said, I believe in political nonviolence as much as possible. I only think you should use violence uh, for self-defense. So if it's not in self-defense, I think it's generally immoral. So I'm, I'll put neutral here. Like, yeah, if you're oppressed and you've been oppressed for a really long time and there's like a sort of like systemic 
baked into the cake kind of violence occurring to you, uh, occurring, uh, you know, against you on a regular basis, then yeah, I guess you can make some sort of argument that it is an act of self-defense to rise up against the oppression. Um, but again, as I stated before, I just think that we're in a position where <laughs> the, it wouldn't work. We don't have the numbers. We don't have the money. We don't have the weapons. We it, you would get defeated immediately. So it's kind of like I think it's a almost like a silly notion in a way. Like you, we are in. We have no choice but to be incredibly strategic about how to reach a society where we have our goals met. And it's almost like the revolution idea is like throw theory out the window and let's just sort of like rage quit and try to use violence. And it's like that's obviously not going to work. And it's also, I think, immoral and unethical and wrong on principle because, again, the only time I think you should use violence is for self-defense. So let me read this one more time. Oppressed peoples have the right to engage in a violent uprising when all other options have been exhausted. I guess I got to go neutral because the all other options line makes me feel like we, uh, we already tried everything else, and now everything is still screwed, and it's not getting better, so do, what do you want us to do? I mean, I guess you'd be in, within your rights to do, like, a violent uprising at that time, but again, it's not going to work, so it's probably not a good idea, so maybe you shouldn't do it, and you need to try to find a strategic other way. I'm just going to hit neutral. Um, the means of production, such as factories and farms, must be publicly owned. Factories and farms? I don't think... All factories and all farms need to be publicly owned. No, not all of them. I think we should have more worker-owned co-ops. I think we should have more workplace democracy. But I wouldn't, like, ban the idea of any private farms or factories. I think that goes too far. The means of production must be publicly owned. No, I disagree with that. Material conditions and needs are the dominant drive behind socioeconomic changes. Yeah, I think that's true. Socialism can only be fully achieved in developed, industrialized societies. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to put neutral. I genuinely don't know. From each according to his ability, to each according to his need is a good principle. I disagree. I actually tend to believe more in um, meritocracy, hierarchy, and competition compared to your average leftist. Like, I think that sometimes you need competition, sometimes you need meritocracy, and sometimes you need hierarchy. I think hierarchy is not inherently illegitimate, whereas there are many people on the left who, who seem to believe that, you know, hierarchy is like almost always wrong and always oppressive. I simply don't believe that. I think there are instances of hierarchy that are justifiable and that actually make perfect sense. So I think that sets me apart a little more from um, a lot of other leftists. And that's why I've always tried to be open and honest with you guys and tell you guys I viewed myself as more of a social democrat than just a flat out socialist. Uh, let me read this again. From each according to his ability, to each according to his need is a good principle. I, I just disagree with that. Uh, it is possible to peacefully convince the ruling class to conform to a socialist society. Depends what you mean by peacefully, right? Like, you're not going to talk them into it, but you don't have to talk them into it. You just get the governing majority and then, like, pass higher taxes on them and pass universal health care. And it doesn't fucking much matter how they feel about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to convince them. You just need to do the things that you have to do. It is possible to peacefully convince the ruling class to conform to a socialist society. No, you can't. Capitalism will induce its own demise through contradictions that result in crisis. Um... I mean, yeah, I think Marx was right about this. I think he's pretty much spot on. Like, yeah, capitalism will induce its own demise through contradictions that result in crisis. Pretty much. Yeah, capitalism left on its own is sort of abysmal. <laughs> Class conflict is a force that has influenced much of human history. Yeah, I think that's undeniable. The establishment of socialism is a gradual process rather than an instant or rapid one. Yeah, I think that you're more likely to have success with a gradual process and you're going to immediately fail with an instant or rapid process. So I agree with that. Um, society is chiefly driven by individuals and ideas. Mm. I mean, I both agree with that and disagree with that. Like, yes, it is driven by individuals and ideas, but it's also driven by the community and actions, not necessarily ideas. So society is chiefly driven by individuals and ideas. To some extent, yes. To some extent, no. I gotta go neutral. Total economic and social equality is realistically possible to achieve. 
total economic and social equality? No, I don't think that's total is impossible. An economy is generally designed better when it is organized bottom up rather than top down. Yeah, I think generally speaking, generally speaking, bottom up is better than top down. But actually, not always, believe it or not. But generally speaking, yes. Uh, local planners, rather than national planners, are more efficient at running a planned economy. <sighs> sometimes yes, sometimes no. Like, again, this is one of those things where, like, sometimes I want the national government to do something. Sometimes I want that to happen at more of a, a local level or a state level. So I guess i got to go neutral. A centrally planned economy based around computers is a concept worth investigating. I kind of disagree with that. And I don't even want a totally centrally planned economy. Only certain things centrally planned. Um, in underdeveloped societies, a centrally planned economy is the best way to make rapid progress. Mm, disagree with that. I mean, in some ways it'll help, in some ways it wouldn't. It would actually be worse. I'm just going to disagree. The principles of workplace democracy and self-management are desirable. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, the state can be best defined as a monopoly on violence and oppression. I mean, in some ways, yes, the state, having a state, yes, the state does have a monopoly on violence. That's true. They could legally use violence in a way that, you know, individual citizens cannot. Um, but a monopoly on oppression, no, not necessarily. There's a, many ways to be oppressed. Um, state can best be defined as a monopoly on violence and oppression. No, no, I, I don't, that doesn't ring totally true to me. A highly centralized planned economy is not socialism, but rather state capitalism. Highly centralized planned economy. A highly centralized planned economy, hmm, is not socialism, but state capitalism. I don't know, a highly centralized planned economy so that's like if the federal government in the United States ran every single industry and like set wages for everybody and stuff like that and they're saying that's not socialism but that's state capitalism. I actually simply don't know how I would define that kind of a system. So I'm just going to go neutral slash unsure. I don't know the best way to label that system or the most accurate way to label that system. Bureaucracy and inefficiency are always inherent in centrally planned economies. Bureaucracy and inefficiency are always inherent in centrally planned economies. I mean, I think bureaucracy and inefficiency exist in probably every system. And is it worse in a centrally planned economy? I honestly don't know if it's better or worse. It might just be part of, like, being human, that all of our institutions have some degree of bureaucracy and inefficiency. Um, bureaucracy and inefficiency are always... Inherent in centrally planned economies. Mm, I won't say it's inherent, no. You could do. You can run the government in a way that has not as much bureaucracy and not as much inefficiency. It's possible to do that. Um, it is necessary to establish a dictatorship of the proletariat as a transitionary stage between capitalism and socialism. No. The government should be capable of assigning individuals to workplaces. No. A world socialist republic is a realistic and desirable goal. No. I See, this is what I mean. I'm more of like, I believe in the concept of a nation state more than a lot of leftists. Like, I don't believe global government is possible or ever going to happen or even desirable. Nationalism and patriotism are impulses that are unacceptable in a socialist society. No, I disagree with that. Nation states, I don't think, are inherently illegitimate or evil. You can have nation states and they can act... But in a benign way, like to have a nation state is just to acknowledge that there needs to be planning that occurs on various levels of human society when you hit certain thresholds of population numbers. You see what I'm saying? Like the fact that you have a town is like it inherently oppressive that you have a town or that you live in like a village or that you live in a city. No, it's just a descriptor of an, a, an area where a certain number of people live. Right. And you organize in that area. And by the same token, a nation state could be the same thing. Like, this is just how we organize this area for governing purposes. So nation states are not inherently illegitimate or inherently violent or things that need to be abolished. Um, but a lot of lefties think that is the case, and I happen to not be one of them. 
Um, I think that nation states are almost necessary to organize humanity in a way that's reasonable and that would function. So let me read this one more time. Nationalism and patriotism are impulses that are unacceptable in a socialist society. I disagree with that. The global socialist movement should be led by a single party organization. No, I disagree with that. Foreign officials have no right to dictate policy in another country. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Uh, open borders between like-minded socialist countries is desirable. No, like totally open borders? I actually don't mind having borders and having a reasonable humanitarian process in place. You know what I mean? Like, that is desirable to me compared to totally open borders. Open borders between like-minded socialist countries is desirable. I disagree. Any socialist country should be dedicated to exporting their ideology abroad. Disagree. People of similar cultures should unite in federations or confederations. No. What is this? <laughs> Apparently, whatever part whatever part this is, is like, I'm going to be 100% on one side or the other. Uh, the international proletariat belongs to no country. I mean, I guess I agree with that. You could have like-minded people living in a bunch of different places. National liberation or self-determination for all peoples is a good concept. Yeah, I agree with that. I would be willing to sacrifice my economic resources in my home country in order to help other countries. <sighs> yes and no. Like, first I want to take care of this country. <laughs> like, is that crazy? That first... Like, if I'm electing politicians in the United States of America, I want the politicians to represent me in the United States of America. That's not unreasonable, and that's what every country would expect of their leaders. I would be willing to sacrifice economic resources in my home country in order to help other countries. I mean, in some instances, yes, like if somebody's starving in another country, yeah, I want to stop them from starving, and I'd be willing to pay for that. But, you know, I also would generally prefer to take care of our country first, if that makes sense, right? So I'd be willing to sacrifice economic resources in my home country in order to help other countries. I gotta go neutral. Let me just go neutral. Socialist political parties should participate in liberal democratic elections. Of course. Trade unions and workers' councils should form the basis of a socialist society. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Uh, the leadership of political parties in the progression towards socialism will always lead to authoritarianism. No. Democratic centralism is an authoritarian organizational structure that disregards the masses. Democratic centralism is an authoritarian organizational structure that disregards the masses. I do not know. Only a mass workers' party can achieve any meaningful long-term goals. Only a mass workers' party? No. Mass spontaneous actions are more effective than carefully planned actions. No. The fact that so many workers vote for bourgeois parties um, over socialist parties is proof that party politics are no longer relevant. That's totally wrong. They're relevant whether or not you want to acknowledge it. You want to pretend like they're not relevant? Fine, but they're definitely relevant. Socialist organizations are generally better off when organized loosely and decentrally. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I gotta go neutral. Um, large Trade unionism has been largely corrupted by the ruling class and is no longer a viable structure for a socialist organization. So it has been corrupted by the ruling class, but that doesn't mean it's no longer viable and necessary. It's still viable and necessary. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it has been corrupted. So fucking uncorrupt it in the same way that we have to uncorrupt our governments. Like, that's not a thing you can afford to just throw your hands up and be like, well, I guess we gotta, you know, concede on this front. That's stupid and that's defeatism. Trade unionism has been largely corrupted by the ruling class and is no longer a viable structure for a socialist organization. Disagree. Climate change is a major global threat that all socialists must fiercely combat. Yeah, I agree. Um, measures to address environmental issues are unacceptable if they result in significant decreases in production and quality of life. Measures to address environmental issues are unacceptable if they result in significant decreases in production and quality of life. Yeah, significant decreases in quality of life. I agree. You can't do significant decreases in quality of life. You need to keep the quality of life high and also address the crisis. 
it is foolish to expect renewable energy sources to be able to replace fossil fuels. No. Industrialized farming practices must be abolished even if it leads to lower outputs. I gotta go neutral because... We need to be able to feed everybody. Like, we need industrialized farms, but they need to clean up their act. So, hold on, let me read this again. Industrialized farming practices must be abolished. Even if it leads to lower outputs. I gotta disagree with that. Um, it will be important to implement extensive environmental protections as part of achieving socialism. It will be important to implement extensive environmental protections as part of achieving socialism. Agree. Experimental environmentally friendly food sources like cultured meat are worth investing in. Yeah, I guess. That makes sense. Personal motor vehicles such as cars should be replaced with free public transport. Replaced? No. You could do better public transportation, but not like ban personal individual transportation. It is acceptable for humanity to suffer to some notable extent in order to preserve the natural ecosystem. Suffer? That's a re weird word to use. No, I disagree. We must radically alter our food consumption in order to limit the exploitation of nature. Yeah, we need to alter our food consumption for sure in order to stop exploiting nature. That is true. Human population growth must be curbed to prevent an ecological disaster. No, it's very Malthusian. Some small-scale destruction of nature is acceptable if it notably benefits humanity. Yeah, small-scale destruction of nature? Yes, you could... Do small scale things if it really benefits humanity. Um, humanity must return to the primitive ways of the past to overcome long term climate issues. Disagree. We must accept that the socialist states of the 20th century failed to seriously address environmental issues. Did they? I don't know if they did. Unsure. The oppression of LGBTQ plus people is a major issue that needs to be seriously addressed. Yes. Traditional gender roles, such as women being homemakers, need to be overcome. Yeah, I think that women should be able to do whatever they want to do. Marriage is a patriarchal social construct that should be phased out. No, I disagree with that. If marriage is something that people want to do, let them do it. I don't see the big deal. Uh, abortion is an immoral act that should be banned or significantly limited. Disagree. Religions overall have a mostly positive effect and should remain influential in society. I disagree. They had negative effects, too. Minority populations should be should receive special legal protection. Special legal protection? They should be legally protected, of course, but special legal protection? Oh, I guess they're trying to say, like, protected classes, like in the Civil Rights Act. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, a socialist government has no right to disrupt religious or cultural traditions in any situation. A socialist government has no right to disrupt religious or cultural traditions in any situation. No, I disagree with that, because if it's in a situation where, like, ultra-Orthodox Jewish rabbis are sucking off the tips of baby dicks, as they fucking do in circumcision ceremonies, then yeah, I want the government to stop that, of course. Like, spreading herpes to, like, little kids, and then they die. I've covered these stories, it's insane. Prisons are oppressive and antiquated institutions that need to be abolished. Sorry, guys, I disagree with that. I think that for violent crime, prisons can exist. If somebody commits a quadruple murder and then rapes the dead body and shows no signs of any sort of rehabilitation, what do you want to do with that person? Not put him in prison? I just think that's so utopian and silly, honestly. Prisons are oppressive and antiquated institutions that need to be abolished. Disagree. Policies that enable mass immigration are naive and should not be implemented. Yeah, I generally agree with that. You cannot achieve a socialist society without also making significant social progress. Yeah, that sounds true. Okay, let's see. Okay. 72.1% on the side of reform, of reform, only 27.9% on the side of revolution. Um, for science, I'm 60.9% on the side of science and 39.1% on the side of utopian. For um, the government, I'm... 40% in favor of having a centralized government and 60% in favor of having a decentralized government. So I have like a very neutral view on where government should be centralized. Um, for nation state, um, I believe 60.7% I believe in the nation state and only 39.3% international. Um, 
I'm apparently neutral when it comes to party versus union. I'm 53.8% on the side of party politics, 46.2% on the side of union politics. Um, I'm neutral when it comes to production versus nature, 55% on the side of production, 54% on the side of production, 45%, 46% on the side of nature. Um, I'm 60.3% progressive and 39.7% um, conservative. So they say my closest match is centrist Marxism. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> centrist Marxism is a form of Marxism that adopts Marxist views on society and the economy while also refraining from taking a definitive position on revolution and reformism. Many centrist Marxists may also be more nationalistic than other Marxists. And then, so let's see my next closest next closest matches. This is interesting. Um, with your closest match as 100% and farthest as, as 0%, here's how you match with other ideologies. What percentage was I of... It doesn't say the percentage of centrist Marxism that I was. 86.6% um, believe, in, believe in social democracy. Social democracy is a center-left ideology that advocates for mixing left-leaning values such as social welfare and corporate regulation with capitalism and liberal democracy in the form of a mixed economy. Uh, many modern social democracies favor Keynesian economics. So 86.6% social democracy, 84.4% left-wing nationalism. They say left-wing nationalism is an ideology that mixes left-wing economics with non-xenophobic nationalism and patriotism. Many left-wing nationalists are simultaneously supportive of international solidarity and may be supportive of armed struggle. Um, utopian socialism, 80.2%. Utopian socialism is a form of pre-Marxist socialism that believes highly in an egalitarian, moralistic, and idealistic foundation for a socialist society. Utopian socialists generally reject violent revolution and often believe the ruling class can be convinced to adopt socialism. I definitely don't believe that. Um, democratic socialism, 78.4%. Democratic socialism is a form of socialism that seeks to utilize liberal democracy as a means to achieve a socialist economy and society, democratic socialists reject revolution and centrally an essentially planned economy, instead supporting moderate social ownership in the form of publicly owned utilities and democratic workplace self-management. Then I'm a market anarchist, 63%. I'm going to stop reading uh, the descriptions here. 63% market anarchism, 36.1% orthodox Marxism, and then the list goes on and on. Basically, I'm zero eco-anarchism, zero or 10% left communism. 14% council communism, 16% anarcho-communism, 19% Marxism-Leninism, 19% eco-Marxism. Okay, this is really interesting. Now, so the eight values test has me as a libertarian socialist. Um, this one has me as a classic Mar or centrist Marxist, which, by the way, is kind of funny because that almost sounds like a contradiction in terms, right? Like, you're both a centrist and a Marxist? How is that possible? Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're asking me how I will be identifying myself, <laughs> I will not be calling myself a centrist Marxist. Um, I, I'm a little more comfortable with libertarian socialists, like I came out in the other, um, in the eight values test. But yeah, it's interesting, I'm a centrist Marxist, but they give me very high for social democracy and left-wing nationalism as well. That's really interesting to me. So, anyway, there you have it, everybody. You can now create your memes that secular talk is libertarian socialist talk or secular talk is now centrist Marxist talk. <laughs> I think that's really funny. So anyway, um, I'll leave the link for this test in the video description box below. Take it and enjoy and see where you fall on that spectrum.